before we get started, just a couple of announcements. First, um, if you have any ideas for Tech Talk, please contact me. You can reach me via the Tech Talk website, techtalk.abcmassive.com, or just go and find me on the support pool over here. Or if you have a suggestion, um, you want to present yourself, or there's a topic you'd like someone else to present on, just let me know. And uh, Mike Gregorian, who works on the back end, makes all this stuff possible, is going to talk to us about some of the new updates for the Tech Talk system. I don't want to take away from the actual event, um, but I wanted to let you know about a, a few changes that have been made on the, the back end of the uh, entire process. Um, one big thing that's been added um, is a uh, new uh, streaming server in our Irvine data center. Um, so for those of you that have had issues before with connecting to a live stream, um, we probably have uh, mitigated those at this point. Um, the other uh, big thing is um, iOS and Safari HTML5 streaming. So you can also view your uh, live stream um, from Tech Talk on an iOS device or in Safari in a native HTML5 um, player. Um, that's only for live streams right now. That's coming to be archived media as well in the very near future. So um, I hope you guys enjoy the changes. And I hope it's uh, uh, very stable and uh, easy to use for everyone. Um, that's all I gotta say. Okay. All right, and with that, we'll head it over to Warren. Hi, so I'm Warren. Um, I really like NASA. Um, I want to talk to you about the basics of NASA and uh, why I like NASA, and maybe we can use it next time when starting this project. And I want to, by the way, the, the default. Uh, Frame of motor with I2 would be great, but you would consider to not add into the good alternative. Some say that, you know, it's not even any error between them, but I guess you try. Um, sorry, uh, I want to know roughly like, what is your experience with, uh, with NASA or with your Ruby in general. Can you, like, raise your hand uh, in the world with NASA? So keep your hands on the air if you did maybe like a web service with NASA. One, two, three, I'm not sure. Um, keep your hands in the air if you did like a website, not just a, a web service. One hand. Well, how about testing? Sure. <laughs> you can go to six if you want, I'll let you off. That doesn't hurt anyway. You should dive the light so you can uh, do something. <laughs> All right, so uh, I have like 10 slides, yeah. but I want to focus on, on code. I want to show you uh, a few uh, features I like about Sinatra and how to do them. So we'll focus on code. This is just maybe 10 slides slide with one piece of okay. Okay, so focus on code mainly. So the first uh, <laughs> term that we want to introduce is rack. I'm not sure if I pronounced it uh, right. Is it rack or rack? Whatever. I can pronounce your name as well, so let me see. Um, so that's the basis for Sinatra and also for Ray. Um, can you see this background? So I'm hoping that I uh, get to explain it. Um, I'm not sure if I dealt with any of the other uh, uh, components here, but basically a web uh, or any request uh, to our site, to our website, doesn't go straight to our Ray, it goes to our Sinatra. Right? It goes to other elements of the way. The first one is probably going to be the HTTP server. It's either the Nginx or, or Apache. Uh, and, and then it goes to the app server, uh, or maybe multiple app servers that are distributed across multiple machines, right? Uh, if one of the jobs of, of the uh, Nginx is, uh, can be the load balance, which is where what app server to go to. And the app server, I gave an example of a scene on Mongrel or Webrick uh, or Unicorn, which I'm not familiar with. We'll, we'll pass the request to uh, the framework. That's really bad. Which that can be great, or Sonata, or Rack, or, or framework. And I don't have it, but somewhere around here is going to be our code that sits on top of the framework. Is this diagram pretty clear? Cool. Um, so I wrote Rack here because 
Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, a few years ago, uh, I think it was raised to raise something uh, that they decided that, hey, let's, let's change the way we build the rails and then let's have it uh, conform to the rack spec. I'm saying spec, but that's all, all it is. It's just uh, a, a way, convention of building a website. So as far as we're concerned as, as web developers, a rack is just the simplest way that we can build a website. Uh, before there was a convention, which I'll just explain in a second what is it. What is the convention is? Before this convention, it was pretty chaotic because you, the website developer, you would build something, but you're not confident that your something will fit nicely with the app server, with the pin or whatever uh, was there at the time. Um, so the, thanks to this convention, us as website developers and the developers who build the app servers, if both sides will conform to the rack spec, we're good. We know it's going to work with all the app servers, and they know that they're also another name for app server is rack handler, but it handles our rack. So it's kind of like creating a basis, common basis for developers. Like that's what it is, pretty much. So Ray is adopted rack, Sinatra has adopted rack. Um, some of you guys are familiar with waves. Uh, uh, camping, there's a bunch of frameworks, and uh, it's not a, a Ruby uh, genius idea. I think it was taken from the Python world. They have like something called WSGI, I believe, which is a different spec, even more uh, uh, detailed than Rack. Rack is not a little bit more permissive. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm going to show you um, a little bit how Rack application looks like. So there's going to be our hello world. Okay. So you are going to have a terminal. Um, so I didn't explain to you what rack is or what is the spec. So let's just first see it and then we'll talk about what it is. Um, I'm running it Ruby and then space the name of the file. One. Now we're going to hear me twice. Muted. Okay. All right. Let's run. Uh, I'm on port. Nine three nine three, right? Um, doesn't work. Okay, I'm using a uh, AP, which is a shortcut for it's a uh, awesome print. So I like the find. You can do this. Right under that song. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just I just required it from the console. Um, let's see if it's going to work now. <coughs> and we've got hello rack. So we just have a website. Good job. How many lines of code? Ah, 11. But we have spaces. We can minimize. <laughs> um, so that, that's the spec, basically. It's an object with one method. The name of the method is called. And it gets an environment, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Uh, and it returns an array. The array has three elements, the status code, the headers, which is a hash, and any anything that responds to each, right? In Ruby one nine two, uh, it has to be a string, uh, an array. Because I believe that they took out the each from the uh, string. But if you do it in one eight seven, I believe that you can just pass the string. Does it make sense? Is it pretty simple, right? So now we're all Rack developers. We can all build a website with Rack. Uh, and notice nine eleven. We have uh, the the handler. We have the application, right? Where's my fancy diagram? We have this guy, right? So we're saying it's thin, but it can be mongrel, it can be whatever handler we, we get. And we, we have, and notice that we're using the run method. It's a, it's a class method of the thin uh, class, right? And we're passing it our object. That's why I'm doing hello world.new and the port. And that's about it. Um, and I did printing of the environment. Let's see what's going on there. Um, so we can see the version of the rack. Um, we can see this was a get. We can see the path, path info, right? Keep alive. I think keep alive is something new to HTTP 1. one. So now the connection is always going to be alive and it can send back stuff to, to the browser. Um, languages. Cool. So we have a lot of stuff here. Um, let's see another example. Um, what would be passing variable, right? So I can pass a variable. In this case, I have an initialize method, right? And line 
Line 13, I'm testing Kitty, right? Let's try to run it and see what happens. I don't need awesome print anymore. Right, passing. Okay, the same port. Okay. Got hello kitty. Um, and same stuff. Now, the interesting thing about the spec that uh, I don't know if you guys know about Lambda or a proc in Ruby. But he doesn't know what proc or Lambda is. Wow. So. <laughs> Some people are shy, and after the presentation, will ask me. Um, so let's see if I have. Uh, so yeah, so I have a proc. Proc is uh, proc and lambda have the call method, right? So I'm just I can just pass a proc object to my handler, which I'm doing here, or a lambda. Um, we saw this already. Uh, rack up, and when I use uh, the rack gem. Gem install rack. I get all kind of nice, uh, nice utilities I can use, or, or uh, classes of rack request, rack response. So I don't need to analyze myself everything if I want to build something more meaningful with rack. I'm not going to do it by hand. Like look at the query string. And I can use those uh, those objects. That's what I'm doing here. Um, now also when you use the gem called rack, you get something uh, called rack up, which is a command line utility that you can use. Uh, and then you can basically put uh, a, config, a file called, uh, by default, rackup.ru, which I'm doing here. Rack up. And you can also specify what port you want, because you know you want, don't want to hard core your port in the, in the file, right? You can say, I want to run on this one. And it will look by default for config.ru, or you can change the file name, but then you have to pass it to the rackup uh, tool. And Runs we should have using a uh, rack tool. Normally, that's what you're going to do if you're going to build an application based on rack. Um, now, try one of them. You're going to use a usually a config are you uh, to initiate your whole uh, rack process. Cool. So, are we are we good? Do we have any anything else? Cool. So we're done with rack. Um, we're gonna build our first uh, hello world in Sinatra. Um, not right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty new to Mac and I'm still getting annoyed. I think Debian is much better, but that's maybe different tech talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. You're all Mac. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you need to understand there's two different types of, of applications in of, of natural applications, and the reason why you gotta understand it because if you're gonna read the documentation, you will see it right away. And if you want ever want to extend Sinatra beyond what it is, you have to know the differences. Pretty slight um, difference, but there's some meaning. On the left side, uh, you can see the two parts that consist of the modular version, and on the right, you can see the classical version. Just run it. Uh, uh, classic, right? I don't like this port, so I'm going to change this port to 93. Okay. And also curl it if we want. Woo! Happy hour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if curling. Nine three, nine three. Let's do dash v to get verbose. What we got? Okay, looks okay. All right, got everything here. Uh, and we can go to the browser as well if we really want to. Cool. So we just built our first um, classic classical style. Um, notice that we require Sinatra base. Sorry, I'm confused. We did the classical, so we required the Sinatra and not Sinatra base. Um, and if we run the left, this this guy here, instead of classic, this guy lives in
modular uh, same port. Huh? Oh, we can do this stuff because we're using a rackup file. Um, we're going to use the rackup or you can use shotgun. That's a, uh, the servers I prefer to work with in development uh, mode because you don't need to refresh or reload the server when you make changes. Um, but you can use mongrel or, or thin, whatever you want. Okay. The gem, gem is called mongrel. That's a modular style. So the main difference, right, is the require. I'm requiring uh, Sinatra base and I'm not requiring Sinatra. That's, uh, and also I'm, I'm uh, inheriting from Sinatra base on the modular style. I tend to use the modular style um, and not the classical style. The main difference is that uh, the classical style pollutes the object, uh, um, the, main, uh, the main object in Ruby. Uh, it's capital O. We're adding some uh, some method to the object, and, uh, and I'll show you in the code exactly. And the, um, the modular style is more uh, contained, so it's better if you're writing a gem and stuff like this. Uh, also, you cannot use Sinatra as a rack middleware, which I'll explain what a middleware is. But if you would ever want to use it, you got to use... Uh, Modular approach. Um, there's uh, more differences. Yes. Um, if you ever want to run multiple Sinatras in one process, which I'll show you, uh, you can do it with the, the classical approach, and you can do with uh, the modular one. Uh, let's just go to see the Sinatra code base. You can really define what Sinatra is, by the way. So, um, some people that the, the, it was created like maybe. I don't know. Do you know what year was Sinatra created? Maybe four years. Uh, so Blake Miserani, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's the guy who created Sinatra, and he works for Heroku. Uh, and right now, the team that maintains or uh, the maintainers are our team in Heroku. So it's not just him. There's like 120 committers, I think, if you go to the GitHub page. Um, in terms of code base, maybe 1,500 lines of code. I think I actually did. Yeah, so the main file is about, you know, that number of lines of code, but there are some comments, so it might be more, might be less. Um, and that's it is, that, that's the code. That's that's what we have. The main file is base.rb. Um, some people say that it's not really a framework, it's uh, it's a library and it's a DSL. And depending depend on how you define a framework, one, one definition that I've heard of that yeah, if the code you're using uh, is calling you, it's a framework. But if you're calling the code, it's a library. So I guess it is a framework according to this definition, but some people say, oh, it doesn't have a built-in ORM and built-in templating system, then it's not a framework. So treat it as whatever you want. It's 2,000 lines of code for DSL for building websites. That's what it is. Um, let's see the Sinatra. Oh, main dot rb. So when you require the classical approach, so if you guys um, decided to uh, require Sinatra and not Sinatra base, you're extending the object, right, uh, with Sinatra delegator, uh, which is a module that is defined somewhere here. Not a def, it's a del. This guy here. Okay, so you're adding some 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 methods to the object. So some people don't like it. Um, that that's what happens. So I think we're pretty clear about the differences between modular and classical. Okay. Um, hello world, maybe? That's a good question, I don't know. Um, yeah. Now, let's see what else we have here. Um, so, many of you guys, uh, not many, but maybe five of the people that raised their hand, build a uh, web service. Um, and I like to use Sinatra even to a website, using templating system and engines, uh, using ERB or, or Haml or, or Stas. CopyScript, all those nice and, um, tools. 
I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do it uh, with Natron. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So on the left side, app.rb, that's how you define the, the routes uh, in Sinatra. Unlike Rails, you don't need to define a uh, routes.rb file. Just create those uh, methods. Get root, for example, will you know, go to the root, right? Get users and do posts. Uh, Look at the code base, if you guys. Uh, um, probably toward the end. Def get. Okay. So this is a little magic that Sinatra gives us. We can um, define get, put, post, delete. Anybody know what patch means? I believe in REST it means to. Uh, when you have resource and you want to update the resource, but not everything, just part of the resource, you can do patch. Uh, so you can do all of those guys. And then if you want to see what happens exactly, it's this, this little method here. Oops, I lost it. Yes, get. It's a method called route, right? And it sends get, it sends the block, right? The third argument, which is exactly this guy. The do end, right? So it sends our block, whoops, and if I go to the route, which is a private method, you see invoke hook and blah, blah, blah. You can dive in, spend your weekend and, and understand it. Or maybe not, because it's pretty complex. But I guess if you really want to understand it, I think you should go back to like the, the early versions of Sinatra, like version, you know, 0 0.1 something. This one is 1.3 current version. Uh, and they also, the nice thing about Sinatra, I'm not sure about Rails, but using semantic versioning. So you have uh, major, minor, and, and uh, patch level, I believe. So if you're using Sinatra 1, uh, 1, 3, whatever, 1, 3, 2, um, or 1, 2, something, you know that up until Sinatra 1, 3, 0, oh, you can, you know, you, you're, you're safe. You know, everything, all the public API would be fine. Let uh, me show you some stuff here. Let's run the, our little uh, Sinatra app. I'm going to use Shotgun as well. Okay. Go to the roots. folder. Yeah, view. Okay, three files, two files in a folder. Okay. Okay. Um, ERB templates using layout and showing the code what I'm doing. Just ERB template. Uh, when you see something like this, this is a method, right? Uh, ERB, and then I can pass uh, um, the symbol. In this case, Sinatra will look for a file called inside the view uh, view folder. That's the default, but you can change it. We'll look for a file called index.erb, which is this guy, right? And we will just render it and return back uh, 200. So Sinatra sits on top of Brack, and you don't need to write, like we saw the previous examples, and we write our, our wrote our first Rack application, we had to define exactly the array that we're returning. So now it's doing it for us, and it returns, uh, in this case, might be 200 or whatever it is. Uh, and if there's an exception, it will return 500 or and so, and so forth. And I'm using a partial, and unlike Rails, you don't need to do anything special. You just need to do ERB and then my partial, locate the partial in the same folder. Um, same with the layout. So if I'll open, uh, uh, I have a layout. Okay. So Sinatra will look for a file called layout.erb or layout.haml or depending on your templating uh, 
and then it will just use this as your route and it will yield uh, whatever it is. In this case, it's going to be index of ERB inside. Yeah. Look at the uh, this route users. I just want to show you um, Haml. Some people really like Haml. Okay. And all I'm doing is in the view index dot Okay. And this example here in line 14, I'm showing how to pass uh, parameters. And you can see the Sinatra README, great length, how to do different uh, with regex or without and different ways to do it. But simply variable will be available for me. Um, admin. And I also show you that you can have multiple, more folders inside your view folder. So if you have a pretty big application, you can always structure it nicely inside your view folder. It here in the admin. All right. So I'm just uh, all right. Go to admin. Okay. Works. Uh, let me see if I have more uh, interesting examples for views. Um, so you have um, asset pipeline since Rails 3, 1, something, and you can do the same with Sinatra. There's a gem called asset pass that I'm using. And it's going to take all your files, it's going to be Kafka scripts, it's going to be JavaScript, SAS, whatever you have, and it will, uh, on development, no production, it will just minify them nicely and package them. Uh, I can show you how it's being used. Yeah, so that's that's where it is. Um, that's my Sinatra app, and I'm defining register. Register is the way that Sinatra lets you extend um, extend its class. There's two scopes in Sinatra. One is the class scope or the DSL scope, uh, which is available for you. Um, outside of any route, and also in the configuration file, which I didn't talk about, but I'll show you later. This is the class uh, class scope, and there is an instance scope. That's where the request lives. It's just inside the route itself. So whenever you are in, have it here, here in line 36, when I'm going to be there, it's going to be an instance of the request that I can access. So that so there's there's a way to extend Sinatra to the class level, and there's a way to extend to the object level, to have more objects. Let's say you want, just like Rails gives you H, which lets you escape HTML. You can write H and add it to the uh, instance object. And, and uh, so what they're doing here in, in this gem, um, they created a module and then just register the module. And that the register method is the way to add functionality. In this case, what they added is this method called asset. And that's where I define my asset. Um, I put them inside the app. So, for example, I have like test dot uh, pass, okay, and I have um, also script. I have a load dot coffee, okay. That's where I define them, and then in my view, I can specify something like this: JS main, JS main. Okay, let's just run it and see what happens. Um, shotgun again. What happened? Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so we see that we have some stuff that was added here. Those numbers that they will change only when I'm changing my assets. Okay, and you have multiple of those, right? Now let's try to run it on. And also, we can see that we have um, a Kafka script uh, running, the SAS was running. Now let's try to run it. Um, Production. Okay. Let's see if it actually did. Okay, nothing changed, but hopefully, yeah. Cool. So we got only one one file for our CSS and uh, 
one for JavaScript. Cool. That's it for asset pipelines. If somebody tells you that you can do this uh, without Rails, you can. I haven't done anything with Rails 3 something, so I don't know exactly how it works, but I know it's pretty painful sometimes. And even the Rails core guys are kind of like in conflict within themselves about how to change things there. But it's on the phone. Um, let's see, let's continue with our little slides. Um, multiple applications. So I mentioned that the modules of Sinatra, you can have multiple Sinatras in one process. The question? I'll show you how to do it. Um, by the way, all the all the code I'm showing you, um, except for the stuff that I'll show you, which is internal to our uh, company, is available on my uh, GitHub. It's it's foreign. You can find it. It's called Snap by Example, so you can just clone it and find it well. Okay. So on on the right side, you can see that I have. I'm using the configureU file and I'm using the map method, which is part of the rec spec. Um, so if you remember that we use the, I don't know if we did it, but there's a method called run that the rack, rack gives you. There's map. And there's a few more that this is what we're putting here. So we're mapping routes to an application. Okay. So let's say I have a site and I have different uh, verticals in the site. So I have a search website and a blog and just my admin section, right? So I can just run them together. Um, okay. Let's give it a try. The main website, we had what? Search? Oops. Okay. And you got the idea. Cool. So, so our theme, in this case, launches our, uh, our Sinatra. And in one process, we have three different applications, and uh, you can have different configs for each application. Um, and if your application are small enough and you still want to separate them, it's a good approach. I've seen this used by real people. Just to know how to do it if you guys ever want to. Um, let me see if there's more interesting example to show you. I mean, how would you share stuff between them? Like, would you have to like re-include everything? Or yeah, I don't. I don't think you can. I can share just separate separate objects. You know. That's like redo all the the asset stuff. Or I mean, like sharing code. I guess you can. You know, use jams or just modules, just like you do normally. But you would have to re-require them, or <laughs> you gotta, um, yes, I believe that you would have to require them each one. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what's coming next. Um, oh, rack middleware. Okay. So we know what rack is, right? Uh, what's rack middleware? Rack middleware is a rack, right? It's the same thing that you know had uh, conformed to the rack specification. But it is a part of a chain of racks, of other rack elements or rack components. Um, that, that's, a, that's a middleware. So what, what does it mean that if you have the request and you have your thing, which is the app server, the request goes to a rack middleware. And this rack middleware takes the, um, the environment that was sent to him from thing and he can do something with it, or maybe not. And then he can just pass it to the next rack uh, middleware in the chain. We can have multiple rack middlewares, and the last one is also a rack. It's not right, it just doesn't pass it anywhere, so we just call it rack. But you know, the same idea. It's not right, it's just another rack in the, in the middleware. Cool. Um, the nice thing about rack middleware is that you can decide that you don't even want to access your website for some reason. You just you know, you don't like IE6. Can look at the header and say, "Oh, your i6, go out. You know, send you to the page that let you install, you know, Chrome." Um, actually, I think I have an example for something. Um, or you want uh, profiling, right? You want to see how fast your uh, uh, Sinatra is running, so you can kind of like do time. If 
before you're testing uh, the environment and then time it again and then print it or, or maybe add to the header and then all kinds of things you can do. Uh, filing, monitoring, caching, authentication. Rack itself, the gem comes with uh, a bunch of rack middlewares and when, when you install Sinatra, the gem, it comes with Tilt, which is some sort of a, a way to have like all the different templating engines work and it comes with uh, one rack uh, middleware, which is uh, security or something, something that lets you uh, write secure websites and take care of different uh, uh, vulnerability attacks like XSS and, and, and sniping of, of cookies and stuff like this. Um, so I'll, I'll show you a few rack middlewares. I also mentioned that Sinatra itself can be a rack middleware. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's like a method which I can't remember right now. Probably use, you can just use Sinatra, your Sinatra uh, class, and, and, and that's it. So I'll show you some middleware. This one. I have it right here. Yeah. So on the left side, we have our Sinatra, and I'm going to uh, use the use method. That's how you add middleware, and you just stack them up. So um, our first first one will be this little uh, benchmark middleware I wrote, and look what happened here. Remember the call, right? We have a call method, and that's the important piece. Line 15. Um, I'm using the benchmark it's part of the uh, uh, standard library to, to give a benchmarking of, of how long the request took to my Sinatra. And I'm calling the next rack middleware, which in this case is my Sinatra. I'm passing the environment to this guy. And then at the end, I'm just um, um, sending an email, I guess, that's what I decided to do. Or in this case, I'm just printing it to the terminal, right? I'm using an awesome print again. Yeah, it just prints, but awesome. Now it's colorful. Let's do it for, from the credits. Let's look what happened. Okay. So we just built our first rack middleware, and it's just give us the time that it took. Um, Nothing too fancy. Let's see what else we have here. And this guy just went to GitHub and found it. There's a space, uh, look for a middleware space country on, on GitHub. You'll find a bunch of uh, middlewares. Runtime. Okay. So here what I'm doing, I'm just adding uh, a new, um, key to my HTTP header that I'm responding, replying back to the client, okay? So I'm doing time now and into this request time variable. Then I'm just adding it to the header. Off on print here, whatever. So I have to, do, to use a dash V, okay? For verbose and we should see it right here, okay? X runtime. So now we have it in a nicer way than just printing the console. Um, that's the, what I told you that we can send IE6 requests, right? See this guy. So yeah, I just send it to Chrome because I don't have IE6. So I mean, that's terrible. I don't like it, personal, nothing professional. So I'm going to redirect Chrome uh, outside. Let's see if it will run. It should be okay, right? Because this is not a Chrome client. Yeah, I'm a boring snap wrap. Um, actually, I'm not sure, but let's do it again. Okay, and let's see if it's gonna happen. And I'm here. Nice, okay. Of course, just don't forget to change it to i6 or something. Chrome is awesome. Um, I think we're good. I mean, I can show you more examples, but there's also uh, the built-in example here. It's for basic auth. If you just want to build a simple Sinatra app with simple authentication, you just <coughs> launch a pop-up to tell you to, you know, punch in your password and username. And it's a nice example because you can pass blocks to, to this uh, request. 
that's the thing about it. So in your view, you know, is there just Yeah, we have a before filter in add method. Yeah. We can say before filter just call the authenticate method. Um, I'm not sure if I would do it with the rack middleware though. Oh, okay. If you want, yeah, so rack middleware doesn't know about the logic of your application. If you need something which is logic dependent, move it to a, to a module or a class and, you know. Yes, yeah, it doesn't go last. Yeah. Again? Yeah, it will redirect eventually. Yeah. yeah. If it passes the authentication, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because so you're just no, passing the environment. You're passing the environment to the next yeah. middleware, which no, will take care of it. Yeah. And let's let us run it. You know, it's actually going to run. I don't uh, I lied or anything. Um, I think it's here. Exit off. Running shotgun. Let's try to do it from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's do it from the browser. See what happens. But if I do not running. Okay. Didn't work. Um anybody had an idea? <laughs> okay, let's move swiftly on to the next. <laughs> we've cut this in the. The last in before. So I think the browser remember the name. Right. The login. Yeah. This is not cookie based, right? This is like basic authentication. How can I uh, flash my. You have to open a new browser. Yeah, new browser. New browser. Okay. Thank you, guys. Do you want to do bets on if he wins? Or <laughs> I, I think that sounds uh, pretty uh, promising. The hell? All right. Basic or. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Alright, cool. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's uh, continue with our cats presentation. Um, yeah. Cool. So that's something that many people struggle with when they move from RAIDs or from other more established or um, opinionated frameworks to, to Sinatra. And this question is, I've been asked a lot, and by the way, there's a great chat room in, uh, in IRC called Sinatra, and there's usually 100 people there, very helpful. People are asking, how do I organize my stuff, and can I use Active Record, and, and where is my models, and where is my controllers, and stuff like this. Um, so I can show you what I'm using um, for my Sinatra applications. I'm using this Sinatra template. In theory, it's too small. Small. Yeah. Um, so what do I have? I have uh, all my tests b uh, built in. I have. I'm using Sabra for testing, testing with the WebKit browser, which is headless, which is pretty fast. 
um, and I'm using mini test, my unit test, yard for documentation. Um, app.rb, which that's the main uh, application. Uh, and then I'm just requiring the init files. So I'm requiring init file for my helpers and init file for my models and for my routes. Okay. Um, so that's my file, and that's my main uh, file. So it drops of the JS because the application is not working. There's the drop of uh, price drops. Um, that's how you set different uh, configuration variables. You use the set method. Um, this is how you do uh, use cookies, um, enable sessions. This is that's a configuration block, and you can have configuration blocks for each environment. Logging, dumping of errors, or whatever you want. You can set your public folder and so on. Uh, and and you notice I'm requiring uh, my routes here. If I go to my right routes in it, I'm just requiring home and product, which is right there. In this case, I'm using backbone.js, so I'm basically my Sinatra is pretty lean. I'm just returning a file. I'm returning my index file. Uh, and then later, I'm doing Ajax to get, you know, doing some Ajax call to change product and, and um, do whatever I want uh, with it. That's your public folder. Um, what else? That's where I put my all my tasks. So I have database Redis tasks, right? So I want to go to the terminal and run rake. So first I'm running rake, and rake will run my test. That's hopefully going to be embarrassing. Um, using um, mini test. And also mean test proud, which gives you a nice colorful. Um, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So it would be super easy to run your test. I'm just type break. That's it. And I'm putting it in a nice, nice readme file. Then I can see different things I can do with it. Right? So I defined all of those um, here, all my tasks, my rec tasks, so you know, for testing or for yard documentation, right? How do I open stuff from the terminal on the Mac? Oh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Doc index. So that's basically, and it gives you nice documentation, and you can see all the classes and stuff. And, You want to see how I'm using Bundler or just? Oh, just gen file. Bundler installed. Does it have to know about Bundler when it's on? No. Shouldn't have to. Again? But usually in a Sinatra app, you have to require Bundler. Oh, oh, setup. Yeah, it's a good practice to require. Oh. Require. I don't do it. Right. So I didn't have any issues so far. Oh, but I don't like Bundler, but you know, I'm getting along. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, how, how does Sinatra know to run Bundler? How does Sinatra know? Like the validity exams are just there. Oh. You do it if you're using, using gem sets, using it doesn't gem matter. Yeah. yeah. If you use gem sets, you don't really Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm isolating my gems with gem sets, so maybe that's why. I don't have any conflict with other uh, projects. Yeah. Um, interesting thing is to look at the tests. Uh, I usually start with like uh, exception tests and usually just go, you know, go into the home. So you can you can use this. Uh, the nice DSL that gets gets from uh, Hira. And um, just you know go to visit the root, make sure I get two hundred. Uh, which is actually not, this is a, I think it's a test smell. Because um, acceptance tests, I don't think you're supposed to see, you're supposed to look from the user standpoint. It doesn't know what 200 means. Maybe 
regular expressions, you know, or status codes, or specific, uh, you know, URLs. It's made it funny for me, so I would refactor it and change it. But you know, but yeah, normally I would just look for content um, and not for. Uh, and then I just go and you know, I have my lib. Um, here I'm just doing that, that mini test, which I'm using mini spec, which looks similar to um, to R spec. We have eat and describe blocks, so I can describe a product or creation of product. Um, and assert assert for the different uh, state of this product. So that's it. And question about organizing if not your apps, are we good? Like the uh, the mini test specs uh, changes because you do an assert and the mini text spec actually yeah. must so have can, must yeah. be equal. All um, that weird syntax. Yeah, I just prefer assert equal than doing object dot equals or whatever method is being added. It's my preference. I think it's a little bit faster. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, combining the eat describe and yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Good guy. <laughs> 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 um, anything else I wanted to show you? Let me see. Oh. So, so there's different places that Sinatra is being used that are publicly available. One of them is Rescue. Uh, it's the background job processing thing, so the whole interface is using Sinatra. Uh, we can go there and see the code, but I think it would be interesting. Uh, yesterday I was sitting lunch with uh, the search team, and they're apparently using a rack, uh, a rack application for the auto update, auto suggest. Every time you punch in character, uh, it goes to a rack application and gives you back uh, JSON with the results. And, as you type more characters, you know, the results can just uh, minimize the number of results. I don't think it goes directly from the website. I think we have uh, Bento in the middle, so Bento maybe passes the passes it to the back application. But I looked at the, I cloned the code, and I want to show you. Um, here it is. So on the left, you see the config are you that we're using? Um, here, the use uh, method. So this is a rack middleware. Not sure what it is, but maybe you guys know better than me. It's referring to a source code as APIs. Okay. It's very proprietary. You can't talk about it. It's extremely proprietary. Wait, it's Eric? Eric. Oh my god. Who's <laughs> <laughs> sitting here with a glass in hand? Eric is here. He told me to not to mention it. He might. Wow. You just called him out. <laughs> awesome. I'm excited. I'm honored. So using Lambda, which Lambda is fine because it has a call method, right? So it's, it's a rack. And then we're just calling autosuggest processor, which is a module right there. Autosuggest that you was testing the environment, right? Here it is, suggest. And we're expecting to see somewhere our rack respond, right? So let's look for some array with weird numbers and Um, yes, where is it? Let's go to. Hmm. Go to the file method. Process. Okay, that's where it is. Sorry. Yeah, it was a class a class method. So here um, we're doing something. If their path info is search, whatever, going and do the search. I, I would assume that's the core functionality. We're going to a database, right, and the different results <laughs> option, and eventually, yeah. So here we're returning the array 404. Let's see what the search is. So I guess here we have suggest method of another module, right? And eventually we're returning some suggestion, probably a JSON, and then we're just returning it in the body. Cool. So now we see a real example for Rekka. Um, my GitHub page. By the way, the name of this dog is Sinatra. I mean, it used to be. 
but maybe the read owner just adopted it, adopted him uh, change it. And I think we're pretty much done. If you guys have questions or it's another example that I wanted to show you, which is uh, you know Sinatra with the bootstrap um, uh, Twitter bootstrap. So you can build a fluid layout. So I'm just gonna run it and never use it, but it's pretty fun. Um, do I have it? And change it, it would fit into uh, mobile devices and stuff. The things. Oh, but yeah, it's a fun little example that you can just clone and, and use. And Thank you. Thank you.